Alrighty, guys, welcome back. The Unbounded Ambition Podcast, episode number six. I cannot believe it's episode six already. These episodes just go by so fast. Oh man, anyway, this is Paul Winston. I'm going to be your host today. I'm your host pretty much every episode, but eventually I'd like to get some of the other teammates on here to host an episode or two or however many, and I'd like to get some more guests as well. I'll work on that in the future, but um, this episode, guys, I'm going to just highlight a couple. I'm going to keep this one pretty short, but I'm going to highlight a couple things. The main thing I want to talk about in this episode, because it bears topic on this moment in my life, is visualization. Visualization and how it plays such a key part in accomplishing goals. Uh, But before I get into this, I just want to say thank you so much to everybody who reached out to me on uh, social media, all the DMs, all the emails, all the texts, all the calls, everybody with the well wishes, the congratulatory messages, um, the happy birthday wishes. Uh, It was such an amazing weekend I spent for my 38th birthday, for those of you that don't know. My birthday was on November 7th, and on November 8th, I competed in my second bodybuilding contest at the NPC West Coast Classic down in Huntington Beach, and it was literally the best night of my life. Um, <laughs> I'm literally, I, it's, I can't even put it into words. Look at me. I'm fumbling all over the place here. Uh, I'm still floating on cloud nine. This is just an amazing experience for me. And it was such a awakening because I used the visualization that I coach these young kids on. I used that process to the T and in accomplishing these goals that I set forth, uh, entering this contest. But Anyway, thank you guys so much. All those, all those emails and messages and the texts and everything I got, you guys are amazing. You know, this is bodybuilding and acting are my two passions in life. And at the end of the day, I do this for you guys, you know, like the entertainment purpose is like, it, it just gives me purpose. You know, it's, it just gives me life. So I do this for you guys. And I just want to say thank you again so much. Uh, moving into the episode here. Um, I do want to talk about visualization. And again, like I said, I'm going to keep this one pretty short. Um, we've got a lot going on right now. I'm going to touch on some things. We got some some requests that I got from on social media. Some people wanted to wanted to know a few things, and there's a few questions in there that I'm not going to even cover just because it was getting a little too personal. But I will cover some of the questions that we did get in on uh, Instagram. All right, just to get into this here, visualization is such an important aspect in any process of attaining a goal. And with these kids that I coach, I am always preaching to them about visualization, vision boards. You know, um, if you have like, let's say the, the easiest example I can think about is somebody who wants to get in shape. Now, usually people who want to get in shape, they have some sort of a, a physique in mind. They have a body, they have an example, they have a, you know, a celebrity or an athlete or somebody that they want to, you know, that they're striving to, to look like. So when I coach these kids, usually I'm, I'm really pushing them towards creating a vision board. Vision board is really essential. And I started my, I started my whole journey with vision board, uh, with a vision board, and then it became vision boards. I've had several now, um, visualization, manifestation. These are things combined with hard work that will create literally an unbreakable force. I feel like that's kind of where I'm at in life now, where I've tapped into this visualization, manifestation, hard work, this like trio where you combine those three and it becomes literally, like I said, an unbreakable force. I feel like I'm at a point in life where everything is, everything that I want, everything that I'm working for is manifesting exactly how I plan it. And that's not by accident. You know, it's just like the most successful people in the world didn't become successful on accident. They came successful on purpose because they wanted to be successful. Now, of course, success is a very subjective word. Your version of success may be different than my version, and that's fine. But at the end of the day, you become success, you become a success on purpose. And most of the time, you become successful by living in your purpose. If you're living in your purpose, and you know whatever your purpose is, is unique to you, of course, and, and again, I refer to these kids I'm coaching a lot because it just, it helps me so much just to give back. And it also, it, it lights me up. It like, it really brightens my day when I see them, you know, implementing these tools that I'm giving them. And these tools are, are it's, it's, 
It's simple, right? It's not easy, but it's simple. And once you can really put these tools to work and understand that it's literally a baby step process, every single part of this is a baby step process. And now that I refer to bodybuilding a lot, it just helps me put this into perspective. Now, bodybuilding is one of those things where it's it's the a perfect example of baby steps because every single day you're going to the gym and you're training different muscle groups, or at least I'm training different muscle groups. And then you see it's such a it's such a process, but you slowly start to see that the benefits of that, the gains of that, and then it really really starts to pay dividends. So the visualization process is something that we use in filmmaking as well. Um, you think about a storyboard, the director, the writer, you know, the director, writer, like for Nawalt, for example, I'm the director and the writer. So I've taken my visuals and I've given them to a storyboard artist. The storyboard artist then takes those visuals I've given him, the ideas, the examples, the words, the script, and then he puts them into you know, a whole nother perspective that I may or may not have, have seen before as far as the look is concerned, as far as this or that is concerned. Now, of course, he's got my outline for shots, wide shot, medium shot, close-ups, etc. But at the end of the day, he's bringing his own creativity into it. And just a side note, you know, that's another, one of the most beautiful things about filmmaking is that it's such a collaborative effort. And I've always loved that because I'm, I grew up playing team sports. So that collaborative effort that camaraderie. It just, it's just something that just, I love it. I just really love it. And when you think about filmmaking, for example, and a storyboard artist, in this example, that visualization becomes real. Now, what was the first project that I had a storyboard artist? And moving forward, I will never do a project without a storyboard artist again, because it you find how essential that is in this process of shooting, you know, when you relay those shots to your director of photography so he can set the camera up, get his vision for it. It just, it all just comes together. It's such a big puzzle. And it, when you see those pieces start to come together, it's such a satisfying experience. Um, especially when you tie in everything because it all starts with visualization. It all starts with that, that spark, that idea, that, that visual that you had in your mind. And once you put that down on paper, it literally comes to life. And in this process and where I'm at right now in life, because just talking about the bodybuilding contest, I created a vision board on my phone. Actually, it was just in a notepad. And I just, I screenshot, I went online and I screenshot a bunch of medals, a bunch of gold medals that the, the West coast classic had in previous years. I wanted to figure out what those medals look like so I could have a vision of it. So I went through just Google Images, and I found the I found the uh, the gold medals from the MPC West Coast Classic, and I <laughs> screenshotted a bunch of these, and I put them on this notepad, and I just had, you know, the verbiage that would be with it is you know, win gold and novice, win gold and masters, win gold and open, win the overall, and then I'd have a trophy that would go with these these words, and I'd look at this every morning when I wake up and every night when I went to bed. I would look at these visuals and I would read these words and I would let it just sink into my head. And that visualization really, really started to come to life. So it was almost like when I was at the show, I already knew, as weird as it might sound, I already knew what, obviously I knew what I was there to do, but I already knew that I had it, you know, and not to sound cocky or anything, but I just... There was just, for me, because I'm only competing with myself. Now, I I was very, very, I have nothing but respect. And I was very fortunate to walk away with these with these medals and these trophies because I stepped on stage against some very competitive men. And I have nothing but respect for these men because they busted their ass to get there just like I did. And they all gave their best just like I did. So at the end of the day, nothing but respect, but I'm in competition with myself, not with them. So with this visualization... Everybody else just disappeared for me. So it was just me. It was just me versus me. And the you versus you is just like life. You shouldn't be in competition with anybody else in life. The only person that you should be trying to be better than is who you were yesterday. So that's why another reason why I took so well to bodybuilding is because it's you versus you. And I'm always striving to improve. I'm always striving to become the best version of Paul Winston. 
So in the process of visualization, bodybuilding and acting and producing and making films and production, it all goes hand in hand with me because it's all starting with visualization. And again, you can, you could relate that to anything in life. Now, of course, this podcast is based around an independent filmmaker. I love film. That's what I do. But I also love bodybuilding. That's also what I do. But you could take this knowledge and you can apply that to anything else that you do in your respective field of work. Whatever, that, whatever your career choice is, whatever you do for a living, whatever you do for your love, your passion, you can apply this to that as well. Those visions from your visualization, your vision boards and what have you, they're not going to manifest in t- until you put that hard work in. That hard work is what's going to bring it to life. You can sit back and, and wish and wonder all you want, but until you get out there and bust your ass, break a sweat, shed some tears, when you put the hard work into it, the universe is going to give, it's going to give in. It's going to get out of your way. You put the hard work behind the visuals, it will manifest. Trust me. I'm a living, breathing example of that right now. Just the same goes as I didn't want to just become any actor. I wanted to become the biggest actor. And applying that now to bodybuilding, I didn't I wasn't stepping on the stage just to participate. I was stepping on that fucking stage to dominate. That's it and that's all. I walked on that stage to walk off as a winner. That's it and that's all. Anything that I do, I'm going to give it my all. And I want to be the best. That's the bottom line. Now, not everybody has that same drive and mentality that I have. But if you want to leave a legacy, you want to build something, you want to do something great. Sometimes that's that's what you need to be. And that's what you need to do. So the question I get a lot of the time is... Uh, how does bodybuilding tie into acting? And I know this episode is is really heavy on the bodybuilding aspect. And that's just because I just got done with that contest. And like I said, I'm still floating on cloud nine here. But bodybuilding ties into acting almost seamlessly. Bodybuilding and acting tie into each other, especially for me, because it's all about in acting, whether we like it or not, it might sound shallow, might sound narcissistic, but Your face, your body, your look, that's your business card. So if your look and your physique and your everything about your external is your business card, why not make it the best you can? Now, of course, you want to couple that with a great personality and, you know, have some substance behind behind everything, of course. But at the same time, you know, I'm working in a very shallow industry and that's just the nature of it. So I've accepted it. And it is what it is. So bodybuilding ties almost perfectly. And I'm a big fan of 80s action films. Arnold Schwarzenegger, Sylvester Stallone, uh, Chuck Norris, Jean-Claude Van Damme. I mean, the list goes on. And these guys really inspired me when I was a kid. You know, they were larger than life. Literally larger than life. And films like Commando, Rambo, you know, um, The Predator. These are films that always stuck with me. And these are the kind of films that I want to make. So me with my physique currently, all it's going to do is enable me to do those types of roles that I've always looked up to doing. And the real masculine, tough guy type roles, those were always just really cool for me as a kid. I always looked up to it. I thought it was awesome. And I think that Hollywood lacks those types of films at this moment in time. You can call it whatever you want. Call it toxic masculinity. You can call it, oh, you know, it's Hollywood does, fans don't want to see those kind of films. I beg to differ. I beg to differ. I think men want to see some some big buff dudes kicking some ass. I think it's time for us to bring that back. I think it's time for us to bring back some masculine men who know how to be men and want to lead and want to take charge and they want to kick some ass. I love those kind of films and, and I know tons of people that love those films as well. So we're on our way, guys. Just so you know, we're on our way. We're going to make these films again for you. Alrighty, guys, I'm going to start bringing this to a close here. We're going to end this with uh, some answers to these questions that we're getting on social media. Um, There's quite a few that I got that were a little personal that I'm not really going to get into. Um, Some of the political stuff, guys, I'm not going to touch on that. Some of the uh, personal stuff about who I'm dating, 
I'm not going to get into that either. Um, we'll just save that for maybe some future episodes. We can get into that maybe, but at this point in time, I'm just going to steer clear of that. So just getting into business here. Um, first question is how it feels to be the champ. I, <laughs> I'm floating on cloud nine still. And we're talking about a couple weeks have passed already since the contest. And it feels amazing. It literally feels amazing. I'm floating on cloud nine. All that hard work, all that effort, energy, blood, sweat, tears that I put in, it paid off. It paid off. And the thing is, is I knew it would. I stepped on that stage already knowing. I already won. It was a win-win for me. I step on that stage you go out there, you give it your best, you're already winning. And again, it's you versus you. So it's a win-win. And it feels amazing to be the champ. So thank you for asking. That's an awesome question. Uh, next question is just Walt. That's the question. So um, I know what they meant by that was basically what the hell's going on with Nawalt? This damn thing's been sitting here in production hell for forever. It's It's taken me over a year now to film 25 minutes of a TV pilot. Do you understand how frustrating that is to be at the whim of the government to be, you just, you can't do certain things because things are shut down and then you got to adhere to these certain rules. And they're literally making it impossible for independent filmmakers as, like myself to get something done to the level that I want to get it done at. Now, I could easily just slap it together and call it good, but I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to slap anything to you. Anything that I put my name on, I'm putting everything into. So to answer the question, Nawal is coming. I promise you I will never, ever not finish something that I start. Nawal is coming, but it may take a little longer than expected. Now, that's not ideal for me or you or anybody else and the option that we have on this. But at the end of the day, there are plenty of other platforms we can get this thing on once our option does expire because it does expire actually coming up pretty quick here. We've got a meeting where me and the team are going to deliberate on whether we try to stick this out and run on the fumes and do what we can and finish this, you know, to get it done before 2021. Or... We push it a little bit further, make sure we do it right, take our time, and shoot the rest in 2021. So, some big decisions coming up, and I will keep everybody posted on that, but that's where we're at with Nawalt. So, we don't have a release date. Our option's about to expire. We don't have any filming dates lined up. We're out of money. We're out of resources. We're out of everything. The locations that we had, we lost them because because the shutdown again in Northern California. It's, I mean... I could sit here and just say, what the f***? All day. But where's that going to get me? So, with that being said, I will keep everybody posted. Noald is coming. Trust me. Next question. Um, pers- what is your personal favorite workout in the gym? This is a great question. So, nowadays, my personal favorite workout is... Oh, man, I love the shrug. That's it. You know, the workout, I love to take that trap bar and I love to load it up with weights, at least 315 pounds, at least. And then I just go to town and I just shrug it, shrug it and shrug it until I can't shrug it anymore. I always wanted some big traps. That was my thing. I always wanted some big traps to just stick out through the tank top, through the t-shirt. So shrugging has always been one of my favorite exercises to do. Now, if you ask me what my favorite muscle group is, it would probably be shoulders, but now it's starting to become something else because when you get into bodybuilding, you start to look at what needs work, and those groups tend to become your favorite because you see what they can be, and then you see them start to grow when you do start to work on those and develop them more. Like, say for me, my back is really weak. I don't really have much of a back at all, and I don't have much of a cap on my deltoids. So these are things that I need to work on, so they're, they have become my favorite you know, muscle groups. Um, When I was younger, it was always, you know, biceps and chest. That was always the go-to, the show-off muscles, right? But when you start competing, it's a whole other ballgame and you start to think about things a little differently. Uh, Next question is, do you show... (laughs) Okay, here we go. (laughs) This is a good one. Do you show your butt in the (laughs) wall? So I remember when I first saw this one, I, I had to just, I literally laughed out loud because it was just, it was so funny. But it's, 
when I answered this on Instagram, I said I can neither confirm nor deny any of this. And I'm going to keep it at that right now. You're just going to have to watch. You're going to have to stay tuned. Now, if if a certain network picks this up, you can't show any butt. You can't show any nudity. Like, let's say Netflix, right? Renew the option. The, we, we won't be able to show the butt. Um, but if it gets onto something else, the regulations are a little, you know, they're a little looser. So we might be able to show a little cheek or two. You know, who knows? But uh, the, now the real question you should be asking is, did we shoot my butt in the wall? Because if we shot it, then that's something that we could show. If we didn't shoot it, then there's no there's no chance of showing anything because we didn't shoot it. Now, that's the real question, and I'll just leave that up there for you to uh, to you know use your imagination with. <laughs> Next question here: uh, Where did you come up with Unbounded Ambition Films name? This is a great question. You know, uh, when I was developing Unbounded Ambition Films in 2008, I needed a production company to kind of a name to do business under. And I wasn't just going to slap something together and just call it good. So I wanted to develop something that meant something, something that represented me, my personality, my drive, my disposition. So after a long period of time and deliberation, I I came up with several words that kind of, I felt represented my, my personality and my drive. When I began to map this out, it started to come to unbounded, like limitless. And I always considered myself ambitious. And it was really solidified for me that I was ambitious when people would read the script for Shattered Illusions. And they would say, you know, this is your first project? This is your first film? Oh, oh wow. You're going to shoot this on how much money? Oh, wow, that's ambitious. This is this script is it's really racy. Oh, that's really ambitious. You're going to shoot this in seven days? Oh, that's ambitious. You're going to shoot this on X, Y, and Z dollars? That's ambitious. You're going to get this location? That's ambitious. So I kept on hearing that, that's, that this is ambitious. Well, thank you. I was taking it as a compliment. But people were, people weren't intending it to be a compliment. They were just, you know, trying to basically down talk it in their own way. A lot of them were at least. So, but it was kind of like a, a really good um, resemblance of my personality. So unbounded, ambition. That was kind of the two major words that I felt represented me and my drive. And then in the beginning, it was like, oh, people were saying that's too much. It's, too, it's a mouthful to say that. Unbounded ambition films, that's just way too much. Just make it unbounded films or ambition films. And then at one point in time, I did kind of consider doing that. But... After I thought about it longer, I was like, you know what? Nah, man. F*** that. I'm going to do what I'm going to do. And Unbounded Ambition is what it is. So that's exactly what I'm going to name it. And that's what we stuck with. And here we are. So that's that's how the name came about. And I remember I was drawing this logo out on a piece of binder paper. And I've got that damn piece of binder paper somewhere. i got to find it. I've, it's probably in the office somewhere in a, in a box or something. But I've got it somewhere. And I'm going to find it one of these days. It literally was the start. It was the start of everything in this company you know, when I wrote this whole thing out. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and leave it there, guys. This is uh, episode number six. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I really wanted to talk about that visualization because it really just came to fruition for me just two weeks ago. Thank you guys again so much. It's always a pleasure for me to do this. I have so much fun with this. It's just, it's, it's, I don't know. I, I love it. I love what I do, guys. So and uh it's it's all thanks to you guys so anyway i'll see you guys in the next one